welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about traveling with food allergies, specifically planning for circumstances where you may not have access to a full kitchen. It is the 1st of June here in Wisconsin and school is not out yet. And that is something that is unique to parts of the Midwest, I think, in the United States. But as the school year winds down, I'm starting to prep for our summer road trip to South Dakota. And for those of you that don't know, the state of South Dakota in the United States has long expanses of highway without exits. I've heard that there can be multiple hours worth of driving without exits that contain even a gas station. And so given that circumstance, my allergy mom brain immediately goes to all the what ifs. What happens if our car breaks down in the middle of South Dakota and we need to find a hotel that was not in our plan and doesn't have the kitchenette that I was planning on. For some of you, that may seem absurd. You're like, why is that a big deal? But I happen to know two different really close friends or family members who have traveled to South Dakota and had car trouble. So that is the inspiration for this video. Um, it's my backup plan for this road trip. Um, we have not gone on a lot of road trips in the last few years. My allergy kiddo is five years old, so he uh, was really small prior to the pandemic and most of our vacations were to family members' houses, which is the way to go. Um, they know all of their grocery stores, they have a full kitchen available, they know the best spots to go out to eat, and we are a big fan. But as my older kids get older and older and closer to graduating high school, I mean, they're only in middle school, but I want to make sure we get some awesome family trips under our belt. And so this year, it's the South Dakota road trip. And with that planning, um, I saw some awesome Facebook posts of seasoned allergy moms and what they used for traveling, either for large family trips overseas and some of them, I'm not, I'm not there yet. If you're not there yet, that's okay. Um, but some of these ideas that they had were just really brilliant. So I'm going to show you these three items I bought for traveling. One of them is a hot pot, one of them is a little toaster oven, and a travel sink, sink cutting board idea. And I'm gonna tell you all about my tests with them. If you are like me, I like to plan ahead. Um, for all things involving food in particular with my allergy kiddo we don't just like fly by the seat of our pants we're not very flexible these days and so i wanted to make sure that i had a backup plan if we were eating from a hotel without a kitchen what my kiddo could eat using these items it's obviously not the sink the, the little hot pot and the toaster oven and so we tried his favorite foods over the last week or two in them and i'm going to tell you which ones i'm going to bring on our south dakota road trip and which one I will never travel without. The first item that we practiced with this week, this last week, was this mini toaster oven. And first I want to talk to you about it and give you a few tips and things to know before you buy it. So this is the Dash mini toaster oven. It is adorable. Right, my kids love the the color. It's just so cute. So a few things to know about it is it has a glass lid and a lid door. It has a glass door and a little tray. It has a slide out tray, which is lovely, or the the great. And then it comes with a little cooking tray. Um, the first thing that you need to know is that anytime you're using this, you need to have a fork available. <laughs> it gets it gets really hot and then trying to use a hot pad to grab this little tray and pull it out is nearly impossible. Just don't even try. Save yourself the headache. Just use the tines of a fork to grab on to the, to the grate, pull it out, and you will be at a better place than I was the first time. Also, the way that this cooks is it cooks one temperature. This is literally on or off. There is no in between. And so when you look at the measurements over here, it's just how many minutes it's going to be on. And so when you see that, you know, this is two minutes for light toast or three to four minutes for dark toast, that's all that they're trying to tell you. It cooks at 400 degrees, which may or may not work well for you, depending on how you normally cook. I often cook things at 350 degrees. So that was a concern for me. Um, but there's a lot you can do in this. Don't be scared of it. <laughs> The one thing to know besides 
how it cooks is that the exterior does get very hot. You can see on the side, there's vents on both sides. The entire thing gets hot and the entire thing could burn you. <laughs> so don't put this out and expect your five-year-old, your eight-year-old to be able to use it unsupervised. That is not safe for that. It works for cooking if you are mindful of the temperature and respect it. <laughs> so um, some of the other things to know is that you should unplug it. There's I actually read the entire pamphlet. Oftentimes I don't read, read the entire pamphlet for some electronic things that I have, but I read it all. You have to make sure you cool it, you know, let it cool down. Um, you're supposed to only let it cook for 15 minutes at a time straight. So that could really impact you in how you're planning on using it. For example, um, I cooked, let's see, what was the first thing I cooked in it? A grilled cheese. So I cooked a dairy-free grilled cheese for my son in it. We use country clock plant sticks for the butter substitute and follow your heart for the cheese substitute. It's something that we cook quite frequently. Um, and so know that that could take, you know, five to eight minutes to complete entirely. So if you're wanting to use this to make grilled cheese sandwiches for your entire family, you know, you might have to pause and let it cool down for a little bit before you make the next round of sandwiches. So this is really a personal individual appliance. It's not designed to feed a family of five. So that may influence your decision on whether or not it will work for you. Um, also, when mentioning the, the dairy-free grilled cheese, that was the first thing we tried and it worked well. The thing that happened is, is if you know, know a lot about dairy-free cheese, is that it takes a long time to melt. And so the first sandwich I made, the bread got crispy, I flipped everything over, and then the cheese on the inside was still not melted. And so if you're going to make a dairy-free grilled cheese, the, the method that worked best for me was to start it as an open face sandwich. So I buttered, used the country crock on the bottom piece of bread, left it open and cooked it for a couple minutes until I saw through the little window that the cheese was starting to melt. Then I added the second piece of second piece of bread, toasted that, flipped it over and toasted the other side. It worked. It was tasty. It didn't, if you're watching it, I didn't burn it. <laughs> It, the first one got too crispy for my kiddo. I thought it was good. So it just depends on your perspective of what a grilled cheese should be like. If you have a particular kiddo like mine that wants it lightly toasted but not crunchy, you'll have to really keep an eye on it. <laughs> the second thing that I made in this was cookies. I had this idea in my mind that I could bring this little toaster oven and I could make cookies for my family in a hotel room. I thought, Oh, it'll be so cute. You know, I could make big cookies, like, you know, even like crumble cookies. It could fill the whole little tray and it would be delicious and so fun. We could have like a movie night and I make cookies. And anyways, I was daydreaming. So the thing with this is, like I mentioned before, it cooks at 400 degrees. I made a giant cookie with safe cookie dough and I even flattened it down. I put it on a little piece of parchment and because it cooks so hot, it totally burnt the top of the cookie and the inside was completely raw. And that was within just a couple minutes. <laughs> and so my dreams of large crumble cookies inside the mini toaster oven crashed and burned. But it's okay. I got creative and I tried again. I used the same cookie dough and then I made teeny tiny cookies. I made them like the size of a quarter, maybe a little bit bigger. And I fit five mini cookies on the toaster tray. I still used the parchment paper because I didn't want it to burn to the little cookie sheet in here. And in only like two and a half minutes, it made tiny cookies that were cooked all the way through and that weren't burnt. But again, keep an eye on it. <laughs> so it did successfully make a cookie. The funniest thing I find about the pamphlet for this is that it says recipes inside and it showed this little pamphlet with recipes and you open the recipe booklet and you go through it and it's all variations of toast, avocado toast, almond butter toast with <laughs> different things. So they really market it as mainly a toaster, um, but you can do a lot of other things with it. The next thing I tried making was tater tots. My five-year-old loves, loves, loves all things tater tots. Sometimes he eats them for breakfast, sometimes for dinner, you know, you do what you gotta do. And this successfully made tater tots without a problem. Just know, just like tater tots normally take like 10 or more minutes, it still takes about the same amount of time. I think it maybe took 12 minutes for me to get a crispy tater tot and I rotated them some throughout cooking, but it worked perfectly. I also made our favorite Aldi chicken sandwich patty in it 
And it also, I was shocked. After the cookie incident, I thought for sure it was going to burn the chicken to a crisp before it finished cooking uh, all the way through because it's a frozen, a large piece of chicken but it worked just fine. It took almost the entire 15 minutes of cook time though, and I had to rotate it a few times. So that being said, would I recommend this toaster oven to you and your family? So if you are going on some form of trip and you need a toaster backup plan, it is awesome. It works super well. It was rather consistent with heating. I mean, you might need to rotate things a little bit, um, if I was going on a long trip and I didn't know how I was going to feed my allergy kiddo in particular and he needed a lot of hot food items, but everyone else would be eating out a lot, I would for sure bring it with me. In our case, we are traveling by road. We're bringing our minivan. I have more space than many people would, especially if they're flying somewhere. So I'm bringing my full air fryer because in that case, I can make four or five chicken patty sandwiches for my whole family and I can feed everyone at once. This would have a hard time feeding an entire family or you know, it could do probably two people fine. Um, it would be a great option. Maybe if you have a college age student that needs just a little backup plan and they're, if, they're allowed, if they're allowed to have electric appliances, that is, don't break the rules in the sake of an electric appliance. <laughs> um, just be aware that it is hot and you need to unplug it carefully, let it cool all the way down before you move it. So this is awesome. It's going to stay home for me this time, but I'm gonna keep it with my travel stuff. And if I need it for another trip, I will bring it along. My kids also think it's fun and they would want to cook with it some anyways for fun under supervision and knowing it gets hot. So this is an awesome toaster oven. Find it on Amazon. Um, oh, the other thing, if your kids like things like pizza bagels and whatnot, that would work really well in this because it's designed to toast from above. It does heat from above and below. My allergy kiddo just doesn't eat anything pizza. <laughs> so we, we didn't test it out, but that and chicken nuggets would also work really well on this. We just tend to do the chicken patties more often. I would think you could get at least five or six chicken nuggets on here on, on the little tray at a time. So that would be the perfect amount for a toddler through preschooler. If you're trying to feed a larger person like my tweens, um, my 12 year olds, it, it wouldn't be enough for them to eat just chicken nuggets. That's why we tried the chicken patty. So this is awesome. It's cute. It's adorable. It's really affordable and it's on Amazon. It'll come to your door in just a couple days. So this is a great choice if you need it. The next item I want to talk to you about is this, is it Dezen? Dezen hot pot. It is an electric hot pot and which essentially makes it an electric pan. I mean, that's what it is. It comes with a glass lid. It's non-stick, and it even comes with this little this little egg steamer. I'm not going to bring the egg steamer with me when I travel. We just don't eat that many steamed eggs, but it is really cute, guys. Look, it takes it has two different settings. There's off 150 watts and 600 watts, if you can see that. And I did a lot of experimenting with this. We made ramen. My five-year-old absolutely loves ramen and we do a few different things with it. What I do is I do the instant ramen packets, but because of our milk allergy, I throw away the packet, uh, the seasoning packet that comes with it. We use just the noodles and then I cook the noodles in a broth base. I often use the Better Than Bouillon, the organic low sodium one that I can find at my Costco does not contain dairy in the ingredient list. And then I cook the noodles in that broth base. I add a little bit of soy sauce to it. And then when the noodles are done cooking, we add some chicken and some green onions. And my allergy kiddo loves it. It's one of his favorite meals. It cooked one, this pot cooked one package of ramen wonderfully. I think you could probably do two at a time. It would be really full, but it would work. I think that you could cook a full eight ounces of noodles in this. You'd have to experiment, maybe not quite a full eight ounces. It might be a little bit less. Um, you would have to make sure it doesn't boil over. Um, one thing to note about this is that since it is fully electric, everything's integrated, you do not submerge this in water when you're washing it. You just put water and soap in this part and wash it out. Um, otherwise, I'm pretty sure you'll ruin it. Also, if you're traveling overseas, make sure your electric socket is the correct. Make sure you get whatever converters you need for the country that you're going to. Um, whether it's just the plug end or the power converter part as well. 
We also, one of my kiddos' favorite things are mini sliders. We cooked sliders in this and also worked wonderfully. I think I fit, I fit four mini sliders in here. You could fit a large burger. I mean, this is probably six inches across. I'll have to measure it. It's more than six inches across. Um, so I had absolutely no problem fitting sliders in here. So that is always my backup plan <laughs> for my kiddo is that I would just buy ground beef or chicken from a grocery store, season it up. He could have a burger or he could have chicken. Another thing that we practiced making in it was pancakes. And I will bring this along specifically for pancakes when we're traveling. Pancakes work super well. I'm going to be traveling with the Birchbenders brand of pancakes. My favorite feature is that they are just add water. <laughs> so even though the bags are relatively small, you don't get that much for your money. The convenience factor of just being able to add water and having a dairy-free, egg-free pancake is worth it for us when we're traveling. I normally make the Nora Cooks, Nora Cooks recipe for pancakes at home, um, but because that involves more steps and whatnot and having a dairy-free milk available, then I will use this instead. The key for the Birchbender pancakes is to make sure you follow directions and preheat your pan. I, the first time I made these, I did not preheat the pan and my pancakes were flat, flat, flat. They were sad. And also there are multiple versions of these pancakes that are dairy-free and egg-free on the ingredient list. There is a plant-based protein and there is a chocolate chip version as well as their organic original. All three are safe for my kiddo. If you need to know more information about their cross-contamination or cross-contact um, prevention policies or you know other ways that they can make sure that they're safe for your family, go ahead and contact them. Uh, we previously did a taste test of all three with our family and <laughs> it was pretty fun. So first of all, we thought the original was the best in terms of a standard pancake, what you would expect from a grocery store or like a grocery store pancake. Um, it was fluffy. It was delicious. Everybody in my family liked it. The protein pancake, they would have liked if they hadn't tasted them side by side. They could tell there was something different about them. But if you use a lot of syrup or other things on them, they thought they were they were good. Everybody ate them and said they were good. Was it their favorite? No. Um, the chocolate chip pancake, everyone said it was amazing. However, when I checked the sugar content, they are really sweet. <laughs> so I compared it. I looked at the sugar content. It's almost like eating Oreos. It has so much sugar. So we are not going to eat that on the regular. My family does not do well with high sugar foods at breakfast in particular, but if you wanted to have like a pancake party, this would be perfect. Um, I was even tinkering with trying to figure out how I can make this pancake into like a muffin or a, um, like a cupcake idea. And we tried those and my family member said they tasted good, but it was just a different shape of a pancake. It tasted like a pancake. It didn't taste like a cupcake. So anyways, um, the Birchbender pancakes are the way to go. I think they're really delicious. There are other brands too that are dairy-free and egg-free, um, but I was just looking for ones that were just add water in the preparation. So that being said, this is the one item that will travel with me always. <laughs> it is awesome. It is super lightweight. It travels it works super well the outside does not get really hot i mean the glass lid gets hot but the outside doesn't get anywhere near as hot as the toaster oven so i'd be comfortable using it around people um without worrying as much about them burning themselves obviously it's still an electric appliance you need to make sure that nobody pulls on it or that it falls or spills and so if i was traveling by plane this would be in my carry-on along with allergy safe food for my kiddo because i know that if for instance, one of the circumstances I think about when traveling is what happens if my flight gets delayed? What happens if our flight is canceled and a connecting flight and we're stuck in a different city and I have to get a hotel room? I don't know if you think through all of those contingencies like I do, but if I had this pan with me, I could run to a local grocery store, grab some meat and veggies, cook my kiddo what he needed in a hotel room, no problem. And I know that it would solve a problem for me. And so that is something that I am always going to bring with me. The last item I wanted to talk to you about is this cute little uh, camping wash tub. And it's advertised as not only a collapsible wash tub, but also a, uh, a cutting board. And so it comes with a washing towel. 
I haven't used it. It comes with a little towel as well as a knife. My favorite part about the knife isn't the knife itself, but it's the fact that it has a cover on it. So that makes it much safer for traveling. Um, I thought that it was a, a great dual purpose item. You know, this is probably something that I will just throw in our bag in case I need it. It isn't something that I would necessarily rely on because of the mode of travel we're going to have. Since we're road tripping, we'll be at hotels and whatnot. Most of the places we're staying have at least a kitchenette. Um, but if you are having to wash something larger, it's super convenient. And having a cutting board as well adds the convenience factor. So if you are someone that's staying in a lot of different places or won't have access to a full kitchen, uh, camp camp sink or something like this is a great idea. One thing to keep in mind is this little drain plug. Um, just pay attention to it. I think you're supposed to just put, like invert it to drain the water or like press on it. <laughs> One of my kiddos just like ripped it off and it took a while to get it plugged back in there. And so just, just know I'm pretty sure you're just supposed to press on it to release the water and let it all go down. So when I gave this uh, wash tub, portable sink and cutting board a try, the first thing I noticed is that it is strong enough to hold some water. I only filled it like halfway full, so I didn't go to the top. Um, the first other thing that I noticed is that initially the drain was leaking and I got nervous that it wasn't going to work at all. And so the drain was dripping into my large sink while I filled it up with water. It seemed as the higher I filled it, the weight, like the water pressure of, of everything being filled inside stopped the dripping for the most part. And so I moved it to my countertop and I washed um, my son's breakfast dish in it and it dripped a little bit. So there was maybe, there wasn't even, I don't know, maybe one or two tablespoons of water on the, on the counter after I was done. So that is something to keep in mind. If I was this company, honestly, I probably would have gone without the drain part. Um, it's such a small tub, you can just dump it. And so personally, if I was the person who designed this, I would have just done away with the drain because you can just pour it out. Um, if you are interested in something with a drain, I did just lift the flaps on the drain to let the water out. Um, you know, it works. Is it the best idea and best invention ever? No. Um, I love the fact that it's a cutting board and a wash tub. So if I was to purchase one, I would get one that was a cutting board and wash tub without the drain. Will I bring it probably with us on this trip? Um, I probably will. I'll probably throw it in because it's flat. If I was um, you having limited space, I would just make sure I got one without the drain because then you would know that you're not gonna leak water all over the place. This would be a, a maybe purchase for me if I was buying something new. Out of all three of these items, for sure, go for the hot pot. <laughs> it's amazing and you will not be disappointed with it. I know that $40 is a little bit more to spend um, on than some things, but it's lightweight, it's super versatile, it can cook noodles. If your family members need noodles, you could just use it like a frying pan and it does all those things really well. It cleans up super well because it's non-stick. It doesn't get hot. It's a great choice. So hopefully check back next week. I'm anticipating having a video done on our road trip snacks. One of the things that we always need, I don't know if your family's like mine, when you are, when you're road tripping, you know, even if it's, you're traveling just one day or multiple days in a row, um, your kids end up eating so many snacks in the car that you almost don't need to stop for meals. That's one, one of the things, one of our strategies has been in the last few years as our kids became a little older and it was safer for them to eat in the car. Um, we started just eating our meals in the car and then making sure all of our rest stops were for going to the bathroom and playing and getting all of our wiggles out. Because otherwise, if we're eating at all of our rest stops, it takes like a half hour just to eat. And then you're spending so much time at the rest stop and you just want to get where you're going. And so we try to make sure that we're eating in the car as we drive along. What works really well now is that I have older kids. My 12 year olds pass out the food. I bring a lunch box for my five year old and he just opens it up and has all of his food in it. Um, and we eat as we go, but it's really nice to have high protein snacks and things that everyone likes to eat. So, Check back uh, with me next week. I hope to have a video for you of all of our favorite snacks and where I buy them, as well as ingredient labels for as many of those as I can show you. And I hope to help out your travel planning a little bit. 